You're listening to Create Wealth Through Franchising, and I'm your host, Kim Daly. In my 20 years as a franchise consultant, I've helped hundreds of people achieve their dreams of building and scaling franchise businesses to create wealth. The interview you're about to hear can also be found on my YouTube channel, where I post new franchising content multiple times per week. Please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and to my YouTube channel at kimdaily.tv. Now, enjoy the show. Welcome back to Kim Daily TV, our very special guest for you today. Her name is Colette Bell. She is the founder, along with her husband, of what is today Ace Handyman Services. Colette, welcome to the studio of Kim Daily TV. Thank you so much, Kim. It's an honor to be here with you. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. You know, those of you who follow The Daily Coach, you know that in franchising, it's not about what you do. It's about who you do it with. (laughs) I'm all about helping people find people, franchisors who have experience and track record and, and are just good quality people who genuinely care about you, the franchisee. And Colette is absolutely at the very top of that list. Her and her husband, Andy, have what I would call a true American entrepreneurial story. Husband and wife start a business, turn it into a franchise, toil for many years, and then land this amazing partnership with Ace Hardware that's just skyrocketed their growth. And so, Colette, I want to invite you into the conversation at that point to just share with my followers a little bit about how you and Andy got started and why and what you were dreaming of and how this whole thing has just turned into something truly amazing for you and all of your franchisees. Boy, you're you're so right, Kim. This was an absolute blessing. It's an honor to find ourselves where we are and to be surrounded with such amazing franchisors or franchisees joining us on this journey. So fast forward, because it's a long story, it takes 24 years in real time. But basically, my husband was, you know, fleeing from corporate America. And he was in restaurant management, had been in restaurant management ever since he graduated from from college, loved it. But the hours, it was just you know, it's nights, it's weekends, it's holidays in restaurants. Um, He was working about 100 hours a week, do split shifts. So he'd go in in the morning and then he'd leave in the middle of the day and then he'd go back and he'd be there until two o'clock in the morning. He loved the business. He loved the energy and the the joy and the passion and the customer service, but we were getting ready to start a family. So as soon as I found out I was pregnant, my husband, Andy, said, you know what? It's time. I need to pivot. I need to find something that I can still pour my energy into, but that doesn't take every moment of my available time and energy because now I want to put some towards the family. So um, he started applying for jobs like everybody would normally do. And, you know, a lot of people who are listening to your podcast, they might be in a transition point like this. And, you know, you're putting your resumes out there to see what's happening. Um, And I can remember he, he sat down at the dinner table after about a month of doing it. And he looked at me and he said, Colette, if I have to spend the rest of my life in a cubicle, doing the same things over and over and over to make somebody else richer. I, I just don't think I can do this. And I said, I understand that's, that would zap all of your energy and passion. What do you want to do instead? And he said, I want to start my own business. I want to create a legacy. I want to create something that I'm proud of, but I also want to create something that serves me instead of me serving it. And I said, this sounds fantastic. What do you want to do? And of course, he had no idea. But he quickly found an idea. (laughs) And the way we fell into the world of handyman was obviously not through a construction background because he didn't have one. And heaven knows I didn't. I was teaching school, for heaven's sakes. Um, But we were trying to get some small projects done around our house. I had the baby coming. I had all these great plans for nursery. I wanted, you know, chair railing and some crazy closet contraption thing I'd bought from someplace. And and Andy said, okay, I'm here trying to think of a business. I'll hire the handyman. He can get this all done while I'm getting my, my rest of my life put together. Well, of course, we couldn't find a handyman. <clears throat> I mean, you could find them. They were advertising, but nobody answered their phone. Nobody called you back. 
he was like, I don't understand. I'm trying to give somebody money to get this work done. And I, I can't get anybody to come over to the house. And literally it was a, like a light bulb went on his head. And he said, oh my gosh, we need to start a handyman business. And we need to make sure it's focused towards the customers. And that was really the beginning in 1998. Um, the business took off. It grew quickly. We tried it in three different locations in Colorado to see if it worked. We expanded to three different locations in California, much harder place to have a business. We wanted to make sure it was the right business. And then we fell into the, the wonderful world of franchising. And franchising has been perfect, um, not just for us, but for the business model. Handyman is very local. Um, people want to have a relationship with their handyman, right? Everybody's looking for their guy. Um, and we wanted to be the guy that everybody knew that they could count on. Um, but franchising was also great for us because we were young and we're very, very willing to admit we don't know everything. And the franchisees that joined us on this journey way back then in 2001, as much as the people who are joining us this month, are wonderfully fascinating people with great business backgrounds, with different ways of looking at life. And I really think that's what's kept our business moving forward all these years. People contributing ideas and suggestions and trying things and making little tweaks to make everything better and then bringing that back up to the surface so we could share it with the rest of the system. So it's just been an amazing experience. Um, we franchised in 01 and then we were contacted by Ace Hardware in 2018, completely out of the blue. Um, they had decided it was time uh, for a hardware store who's, you know, going to be 24 years old, believe it, or 100 years old in 2024. So 100 years old in 2024. Um, they're going to delve into services. And they're doing that because lots of consumers are moving towards this do it for me, right? Millennials are buying houses. They don't buy the drills. They don't need the drills. They'll call somebody who has the drill. Um, and senior citizens um, are baby boomers or average age 72. And so they need somebody to help them with their home repairs. We really focus on what ACE always focused on, which is repair and restoration. Small projects, four hours minimum, um, not very complicated, but just enough to get there and help the homeowner get whatever problem is occurring in their home, be better, fix it, um, avoid costly repairs into the future. So if you take care of things earlier, then you can avoid that. Um, and so it took us a year and a half to get through due diligence. Um, finally accomplished it when the world shut down in 2020, <laughs> which was great. Um, but we were listed as essential. And really, like you said, the growth has been tremendous. I mean, we went from 119 territories in 2020 to 352 as of yesterday. Hey, Daily Coach fans, if this franchise sounds like a fit for you, I would love to be your Daily Coach. Email me right now for a totally free consultation at inquire at kimdaily.tv. It's such a great story, you all. It's such a great story. And what number, what ranking were you on that Entrepreneur 500 list this year? Yeah, super proud to be number 127. I'm really excited. And number one in the handyman category. Number one in the handyman category, guys. This handyman woman. <laughs> Who doesn't start the business like all of the franchise owners probably who are attracted to this business with no prior industry experience. That's right. It's such a great story when the actual founders of the franchise saw the business opportunity, but were not the licensed professionals doing the work. And that's how the actual franchise got started, right? Because so many people have that limiting belief that they trip over that I have to know something about handyman or construction work in order to to own that business or manage those contractors, right? So, I mean, with 24 years of experience, I'm quite sure that if Colette and Andy can't talk you through that, their franchisees can. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So you gave a great explanation of the average job size and, and what you do. So talk about some of the um, enhancements that have come into your franchise offering since you've had this partnership with Ace Handyman? I mean, obviously it elevated the name. It went from Handyman Matters to yeah. Ace. Now you're carrying that, you know, 10 pound gorilla or 100 pound gorilla name, yeah. which is bears so much weight and credibility in the consumer's mind. But what else has happened inside your toolbox, if you will, <laughs> um, for your franchisees? Yeah. You know, 
it is amazing the leverage of resources you have the opportunity to take advantage of when you're backed by an $8 billion business. So the name is obvious. Um, but with the name, you know, I, it's kind of like the Spider-Man quote, right? With the name comes great responsibility. You know, we really emphasize to franchisees, we have to caretake this 100-year-old brand name that, let's face it, they've managed to create in customers' minds the helpful folks. I tell you, people sing that jingle to me every time I travel. So we have to be helpful. That means we have to raise our standard of operations. And what ACE brings to the table to help us with that is those resources. Much better software. Software, Kim, that Andy and I looked at, that we drooled over, that we dreamed of, that we simply could not afford. I mean, it just it just wasn't feasible. We couldn't negotiate that contract to a level that it would make sense for our franchisees. So we're upgrading all of our software. We're upgrading our website to be something just absolutely complete, completely amazing. But then it even goes down into the really simple things. And this is such a funny thing, but I tell people about it all the time. T-shirts. Okay, so we have craftsmen. We'd really like them to wear a branded t-shirt. I'm just simple cotton t-shirt. We like the pockets. All the guys like the pockets on front um, with logos front and back. Super simple. We we had worked and worked and felt pretty successful, Andy and I, that we had negotiated a contract with a t-shirt vendor to get those t-shirts at $12 a piece. Okay, great. Now, franchisees go through a lot because they have lots of craftsmen working for them. And we know t-shirts get dirty and get ripped when you're working on the job. So we've got to replace those so they look great. As soon as we were um, integrated into the ACE system and they started writing us into all of their vendor contracts, that $12 t-shirt magically dropped to 7 and even though it doesn't seem like $5 is a big deal, it's a big deal to franchisees. Yeah, man, every um, dollar counts yeah. on the expense line. Every single thing like that. Um, the ability to get better insurance, better coverage, lower price. It's lots of those kinds of things that Ace has been able to leverage for us um, and provide all the way down to the franchisees, not just at the corporate support center, but all the way down to day-to-day -day actions. And I always like to tell people, to me, it's what they provided but it's also what they didn't do that I think is equally as important. Unlike a lot of mergers and acquisitions that go on within the world of franchising and lots of other industries, of course, um, Ace took the perspective that they'd spent a year and a half with us in due diligence, and they decided that they didn't know enough about services to just suck us into Chicago and make us just be a department. What they believed was it was different enough that we needed to stay intact in Denver with all of our same corporate employees, which is kind of stunning, right? They've got 7,000 people in Chicago. They've got a huge marketing department, but they left our marketing people in place. Um, and they add to those resources, but they didn't pull them out to save money, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's just because they knew service was really different than retail. And so to their credit, um, they've done a really good job of what I say is keeping tribal knowledge in place so that what we were is only going to get better. It's not going to change into something that we weren't. Adding to it without detracting, right? right? Because sometimes yeah. when money, big money comes into a franchise, the whole culture of the business changes and then there's a lot of upheaval. <laughs> so yeah. it's, and that's, you know, why this explosive growth that you've had. I mean, there's a couple of reasons. I think we want to get to that one probably being COVID, but I also think that the name brand recognition helps a lot of people say, ooh, right? I mean, handyman service is something that probably pretty pretty much every homeowner who's not handy, like Kim Daly, right, needs. Yeah. Um, but like, who do you trust? Like you said, we all need our guy, right? Like I might have a great guy for landscaper or a great guy for this, but like you need your guy. Right. And so you turn to a, a a, the brand, the trusted brand that you can trust. I mean, that's the value of a brand and that's the, the value of recognition. So yeah. how much um, of, do you think like is the brand and then also co COVID that's helped you grow from 119 to 352 territories in the last couple of years. Yeah, it's winds of fortune, right? I mean, it, it's you, you it really blessings is all I can explain. So, you know, the pandemic absolutely benefited all service industries, right? We saw that people were staying at home. Suddenly people had time to look around during the day. I mean, before COVID, you know, you get up before the sun rises, you're feeding kids, you're putting the dog outside, you're racing to the office, you get home, it's dark, 
you're exhausted all weekend long. You're at soccer tournaments, and you know it's just we didn't. We never. Like, are you talking about my life now? <laughs> we never really stayed home and stared at our four walls like this. And um, people also had a bit of cabin fever through the pandemic, and they wanted to find some way to change their surroundings without actually being able to leave. So home services saw a huge benefit through that. However. Um, what, again, a brilliant company, what they were able to do is track what they called our comp units. So everybody who had been Handyman Matters, right, what is happening to them now that they're ACE Handyman Services? Um, and as the pandemic has tampered down, right, it's never over, but, but as a new normal is being defined, we're seeing that those comp units still are experiencing more than what you would list as standard growth. And that's got to be due to the ACE brand name. We know marketing as a percentage of spend for our expenses is going down. And you and I both know that just doesn't happen very often. But with ACE, what happens is when you advertise under the ACE Handyman Services brand name, customers remember it. So you don't have to advertise three or four times because you advertise the first time, honestly, as Handyman Matters. And they'd go, what was that company? Handy something. It just wasn't memorable. You know, and I, I, it's our name. And so it, it pains me to say that, but it's the truth. But now if people see Ace Handyman Services, a lot of times new customers in a brand new market will call and say, oh, I forgot Ace had a handyman company. <laughs> and you want to say, no, but we're like, well, <laughs> now you have us. And so how can we help you? So it is interesting that brand name um, is driving some very serious metrics for franchisees because anytime you can decrease fixed expenses like marketing you're going to gain those on your on your profitability of the business hey daily coach fans if you're inspired by this conversation i invite you to email me right now to explore this franchise opportunity my email is inquire at kimdaily.tv a lot of trades-based franchises will uh, kind of define their franchise as a sales and marketing engine that, oh, by the way, happens to be in plumber, in plumbing, or you know, in HVAC. Do you define when you're talking a candidate through kind of what you actually do as an owner in this business, do you define it sort of like that, Colette? We, we actually don't. Um, and part of my mindset is you really can't sell somebody a handyman. Either they need them because they have a problem going on in their house or they don't. So I really explain to candidates, we're much more on the team building, employee loving side of the business model. Handyman is interesting because people don't come to us. We go to them and we being our craftsmen who are W2 employees are going to the customer's house. So the owner never even really provides customer service to the customer. It's through the, the vein of the craftsman. So what we found works the best for us is if a franchise owner can have a very defined culture of customer service, we have a great starting point, but every culture is different. So we need the franchise owner to really define what that means for them. And then teach it, train it, um, motivate it, inspire it in all of their employees by providing love and care to our employees, then what happens is our employees translate those same values to our customers. And that's how customer service happens when it's not happening inside of your own four walls. So our model is really much more about team building, appreciation of employees. Um, you know, micromanaging doesn't work. These are professionals. Our craftsmen are all trade professionals that have been doing this. And again, most of our owners don't know how to do a drywall patch. So you can't micromanage some guy who's doing a drywall patch because what would you say, right? You go, well, I don't know. It does. I don't know. So there's nothing to say. So instead, what you have to do is, is really spend all of your time and energy trying to make your employees' lives better and more fulfilling. And then that's how they'll translate customer service to the customers. What an awesome answer. So on the heels of that, to summarize this a different way, same question asked a different way, Colette. So explain to me who your ideal candidate is and what skills they possess. When you're interviewing a, you know, a candidate that Kim Daly brings to you, what are you looking for? Yeah. So I'd say on the hard skills, it really is past management, but more on the, on the, team building motivating side of it rather than true micromanagement. You, it doesn't take very long. You can tell the difference in Kim's 
candidates are always the wonderful team building people, but you know what I mean? You, you need the team building people. Um, and then you really need on the soft skill side, the way we define it is grit and passion. And what I mean by that, of course, Kim, you know, starting any business, even if it's a great franchise model that has a blueprint that has, you know, however many years of track record and, and that kind of stuff, you're still going to hit bumps in the road. Um, that's, that's just life. And so we need franchisees with grit who, when they face a bump in the road, do two things. The first thing is they reach out for help. That's why a franchisor is here. That's why fellow franchisees are here is to provide some assistance. And the second thing is they, they approach it with a get through it, get around it, get over it, get under it, whatever it is, right? However you have to get through that issue, get through it, and then move on to the next business level. So we know there's going to be bumps in the road, but we need people who just have a determination. You know, I always said, and people who've met Andy, and I know you know Andy well, failure is never an option. It never was. And I'm not saying this has been a bed of roses the entire 24 years. We hit some really hard times. Um, that first recession, man, it was scary. It was not only scary for us, it was scary for every single franchisee who had invested in Handyman Matters. Um, but you get through it, right? You figure out ways to band together and you get through things like that. The last soft skill is passion, right? I'm very passionate about our industry. I love what we do. I love our franchisees. I love our customers. I love our craftsmen. And we want, we want franchisees to join us that have that exact same feeling. Um, you've got to love your employees. It is an employee-based model. Um, you got to love your customers because they're wacky sometimes, right? They, they, I mean, they are just customers can be wacky sometimes, but you got to love them. Um, and you have to love the industry and knowing that you're making people's lives better. I love everything you said. <laughs> did anything that she said, guys, did you hear anything that said you had to sling a hammer or, you know, have a propensity toward construction? No. Right. And I love the focus on grit. So I know you know Sharon Kupak from Ecomade. So when I interviewed her here in the studio, she said the word gritology. <laughs> and I was like, Cher, that's the word, right? That's the word we've been looking for in franchising. Because while there is this proven track record and there is support that you have to ask for, and there is, you know, it's all there for you, it doesn't mean it comes easy. Nothing worth doing is easy, right? right. It doesn't mean it's hard forever. It just means it it's it can be hard and you know you grow and it gets easier and then you hit another growth area and it gets hard and it gets easier. But the longer you do it, I think instead of it going like high and low and high and low like a roller coaster, I think it becomes more like, you know, like the smaller, the hills are smaller. Um right. and, and also I think part of that's our emotional journey as business owner changes because we've been there before. We don't go, you know, like when you're a new mom, <laughs> right? And your baby is sick the first time you get a fever, like you're freaking out, running right. to the doctor, right? By the time you have your second or your third kid, you're like, eh. Yeah. The baby's fine. <laughs> the baby was sick for four weeks before you can make the doctor. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you're yeah. just, you've been there, you have experience, you don't panic as much, you don't ride the fear, you you go back to your fundamentals, you go back to what you know, Yeah. and you push through it. Yeah. So what an inspiring conversation. I mean, I Colette has won awards within our franchise community just because she's so amazing. <laughs> if you do have the chance to meet her, if you're exploring this concept, I guarantee even if you don't pick this franchise, you're going to learn a lot about franchising and the human side of what we do in franchising. Like we are a very people centric um, industry. Yeah. We, we are here to help people. And Colette exemplifies that in Kim Daly's opinion. And I'm so happy that you could be my special guest today and we could spotlight Ace Handyman Services. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate it. It was an honor. For those who are interested in the Ace Handyman Services franchise or any other franchise, just beginning your journey, if you're at that fork in the road like Andy and Colette were, oh, so many years ago, and you're ready to think about what could be next for me, don't sit and spin your wheels and try to be an entrepreneur. We have tons of answers here in franchising, and Ace Handyman Services could be a perfect option for you. Please follow the email on the screen right now or reach directly out to me at inquire at kimdaily.tv. That's inquire at kimdaily.tv. Colette Bell, thank you so much for being my amazing special guest here today. Thank you, Kim. Until next time, my name is Kim Daly and I want to be your 
Daily Coach. If you found this inspiring, please contact me at inquire at kimdaily.tv. My consulting services are totally free to you. Again, that email is inquire at kimdaily.tv. I can't wait to hear from you.